started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. I didn't know I had this in me, but I feel so connected. I just like, it's like the moment I was like willing to look into that dark place. The moment I was like, okay, I'm ready. Like, help me see it. Like, I want to see the truth of my life. Like, I want to see the truth. Show me the truth. And then it was like, there's nothing to be afraid of. We've been there. It is safe. It's been seen. And if you're a God girl like me to write that and to feel that in my soul that it's been seen, that was like, wow, okay. I just feel in a place of total, complete, like oneness in this moment of alignment. And I'm just allowing myself to be led. So I have been just posting about this transformation that I'm going through this, like turned into this butterfly blooming. And one of my, she's in my cohort, she's with me in my podcasting course. And she saw one of my posts and she's all, this is amazing. Like, have you thought of writing a book about this transformation? And I said, no, that thought really never crossed my mind. But honestly, if I'm going back now, back when I was a child, I used to say things like, my life should be a book. My life should be a movie. Like this is crazy. Like this life is wild. So now we could repeat that again and say, so I said, I'd never thought of it before, but now that I'm saying it out loud, I definitely have said it before in my past life <laughs> as a kid. But then I've said, okay, so I'm open to whatever that may look like. And literally that same day, one of our other a person in our cohort wrote like, I've written a book. I'm raising my hand to help you. And she is in Australia and worked out a time to like get on Zoom and like walk me through it. And she is going to be on the podcast and she has such an incredible story to share with everybody. And I am so stoked for everybody to hear her journey to writing that book and being guided and led herself. And that whole time when me and her were conversating, it was just like chills up my spine, chills up my spine. Like connected. So yeah, so then I was like, well, I guess I'm going to write this book. And so then I just started saying, okay, I'm writing this book. I I'm writing this book. I'm Joseph the author. I'm writing this book. And for days and days nothing came. I put my pen to paper, a bunch of stuff came. I was like, I need help. I don't know what to make of this. And then yeah, I went through this journey of like, okay, I'm going to write about my childhood and then I was like, I don't see nothing. Like it's like dark because I did go through trauma. So in order to protect myself, I buried it and put it in the darkness. And I just, yeah, it didn't, it, like it didn't happen. And so going back and looking for it, I'm just like, literally, it's the, the craziest thing. It's mind blowing because I've never looked for it before. But to actually like go through the, the years of my childhood and then it's like holes, holes, holes. It's just like, I've never seen that before. So that's like work that I'm excited to do. Like I'm excited now to open the dark and bring some light in. So then the other day I have this devotional that I use <laughs> again, guided. <laughs> I have this devotional that I use daily guidance uh, from our angels, like Doreen Virtue. And it said like, start writing. <laughs> it said literally start writing. And I was like, what? So I wrote the day that I said it and I put a sticky note in there. Like okay, universe, I hear you. I'm listening. So that was the day that I started to write and I was meditating and writing. Yeah. All these words started flowing out of me and now it's become a daily practice. And I wake up eager, excited. I'm not a morning person, but I'm waking up like five in the morning. I'm writing <laughs> like crazy. So on 1-7-2001 or 2022, we're in 2022 now is when this fun started. So I'm just going to read the thought of the day. It's I write expressing myself with words that are inspired by spirit and blessed by the angels. I allow myself to record messages from the heart. Like what? If that isn't being led and guided, I don't know what is. I just love it so much. <laughs>
the thought of like writing that book was like, I'm going to write about my life's journey. I'm going to write about the struggle. I'm going to, yeah, that was the first thought was okay. I'm ready. I'll write about my struggle and I'll write about my healing and I'll write about my journey. And that thought, it did make me not want to write because I was like, do I really want to see this? Do I really want to go back there? So then I didn't write. I didn't write. I just was like, okay, this is wild. <laughs> and then I kept getting like these hints, like this needs to be written. So I, again, another, intu- <laughs> another person, this intuitive healer that I work with, she was like, there's a book in the collective that needs to be written and it has chosen you <laughs> to write this book. <laughs> And I was like, how does she know this? Like how? So again, another push, another push. So I just have allowed myself, I've allowed myself to completely surrender. I've allowed myself to be completely open and to receive it. And I am in meditation. I am listening to music. I am dancing again, which feels so good because for the longest time I stopped dancing, but me and my husband met dancing. Like the reason why he like pursued me was because I was on the dance floor having the time of my life, like total, like in my own, like beingness. And that's what he saw. That was the girl that he fell for before I even knew him. And so no wonder like this is (laughs) the way it's working out, but now I'm dancing and having fun and all of it is just working out. The gaps of my childhood memory, it goes as far back as like, I was writing the ages down and I just remember little blimps. It's like, it's like just little like flashes that come to mind when I think about my childhood and it's only the good stuff. Like I don't see, I don't really see any of the bad stuff. And I do tapping. I am an EFT tapping girl. I've been doing it ever since I could remember it was part of my healing when I learned about it. So I've been tapping a lot and trying to figure out what is these holes. And so some inner child tapping I've been tapping on. And in that tapping, I have come up with something incredible actually this week that I've been working through. I am not really good at getting criticism, constructive or otherwise. And so my first, the first thing that happens when I get criticized or somebody tries to tell me what to do or tries to change something is for me to like fight and like defend myself. And I have sat with that feeling. So the other day I read my poetry or my book or whatever's happening to my husband. And he was like, I could see a few words that need to be tweaked. Like it is good. It's great. But there's like something that needs to be changed. And instantly I was just like, but this is my first draft. Like I instantly went into like defensive mode. And I saw the look on his face, like totally, like he went from being so excited to so deflated. And I was like, oh my God, I just did that. And that was the first time I noticed that I did that. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is not what I wanted to do. So then that led me to like, start thinking about like, why do I react that way? And so, and he's a natural, like, he's an editor. I'm just going to call it that. He naturally wants to edit things. He naturally sees that. And that's just his gift. And that's just who he is. But I took it as he's trying to change me. He's trying to criticize me in a way. So the next time I was like, okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to read something to him. And of course he can't help himself. (laughs) He just loves to help. And so this time when he was telling me like his feedback, I sat with it and I literally sat and bit my tongue and my body literally was seizing up. It started in my lower back, like tensed up and then my throat tensed up. And I had never experienced that before. Cause usually when I'm being criticized, I just shut down or I fight. Like those are the two options. Like I either just don't say anything and it's just like, I'm out here or this time I allowed it to be in my body. And I was just like, wow, there's a story there. And then I started tapping on it. I started tapping on letting go of criticism and the fear of being criticized. Oh, so many memories came up, like so many memories. Like growing up, the biggest one was like, I couldn't load the dishwasher right. Like there was never, I could load the dishwasher right. Like my mom would always come behind me and fix my dishwasher and, or my sweeping. Like I hate sweeping. That's like my least favorite thing to do for like cleaning. And I never really understood why. 
but I would have to sweep the house like two times sometimes because I didn't do it right. So it was just always these little things. Like if you are being criticized in that way as a child, it stays with you and your body keeps that score. And so I was lashing, that was the little Josie just lashing out at Austin because now I could. And so now that I'm releasing it and I'm reframing it and for me in my mind, how I'm working is he's helping me. He's being himself. There's no other way for him to be. He's an editor. He's a, he sees it. That's his gift. So with that reframe, now it's like, okay, I'm not going to hurt him anymore because I was hurting him by me being so defensive because he was only there to help me. He's my husband. He's my person. He's my partner. So yeah, so that just happened this week. So it's fresh. <laughs> the possibilities are endless for this book. I am open to whatever wants to come. I am not putting any expectations other than to be connected to the God within me, to help me on this journey, to guide me on this journey. I honestly don't know, like I, I don't know what's happening, but it's amazing. So I am just going with that feeling and allowing whatever may be to be. But I do know that in my story, there is healing there. In my story, there is a connectiveness that happens from sharing that. I've noticed that with this podcast, every time I open up, people are appreciative of it and they can see themselves in me. And I also want to be that for people. I want to, I am able to hold that space now. Like I have the in me to share that journey for the parts that I remember, the parts that are coming up, the parts that are feeling guided to say. So I, yeah, open to sharing my healing. I'm open to sharing the struggle and just being completely open. I am just open. And my word this year is bloom. Like that is the word. And I am just open to let whatever unfolds just unfolds. And that is in my business. That is in my book. That is in my relationships with my family, my friends, my husband, my child. That's what the word that I have in front of me even now. <laughs> yeah. So my hope is that, is that people will feel what I feel when I even read it. Like I feel, I feel that connection. I feel peace. I feel seen. I feel like I'm not alone. I feel, I feel completely just connected to God. I feel completely just like in alignment. And so I want when people to read it, that helps them get into that alignment. That helps them feel that calm. That helps them feel that contentment. I want that for them because that's what I feel when I'm putting it down on paper. So I want that to resonate. 2022 is gonna be so fun. I've been doing a lot of visioning lately. I'm a visioner. So I've been doing vision boards. I've been doing journaling. I've been doing just reading and consuming. I've, like I said earlier, I've been dancing. I have put on the music throughout the day and I'm just having dance parties and Everett is just loving it. Like he doesn't sit still. Like he's a roamer now. He's crawling everywhere, getting up on everything. And when I start dancing and singing, he sits there and he's just mesmerized for like 20, 30 minutes. And I'm just like, Oh, he's my audience and he loves it so much. So then we, I pick him up and we dance together. It's so fun. So 2022 is going to be the year of blooming. And that is in my business. I am seeing, and of course, again, being guided to create something new, something amazing. I am an embodiment coach. Like that is what healed me. That is the biggest thing that connected me to my body. Like I was so disconnected before I started doing the embodiment work and working with the soma, which is the body. And so I am all about like the wholeness, like the wholeness part of creating the life that you want, creating the body, the feeling, the joy that you want. And so dancing is going to be a big part of that. And so what I'm envisioning for my people, my soul family, the people that I'm opening my arms to receive, to help, to guide, is we're going to be dancing. We're going to be meditating. We're going to be doing those embodiment practices that allow you to receive, that allow you to set boundaries, that allow you to feel good again, to dream again, and in a fun way. Because when I'm having fun is when I'm most centered, when I'm most connected, I'm able to like completely just be outside of my head. Like I am in my body. And that has been the most life-giving thing I've ever done for myself. 
And so, yeah, so I'm putting pen to paper and what is coming up is we're going to dance and we're going to heal. We're going to embody what we truly care about. We are going to ground ourselves and take inspired action. We're going to heal. That's the big thing of 2022 is we're going to heal through having fun because I tried sitting in a chair and talking about it since I was in seventh grade. That didn't work. I mean, I'm sure it did work. But I almost caused me extra trauma because I was just reliving it, reliving it, reliving it. And I was only reliving that small little part that I could remember, that small little part that it was just like a hamster wheel. So even though it was definitely necessary, probably for me to speak it out loud, it wasn't what healed me. And so what healed me is having more fun, is dancing, is connecting to my body. And that is what I want for the women that I'm serving is that. And so 2022 is going to be awesome. Uh, so my ideal client is a woman who is ready to feel joy again. A person who is, the word bloom comes to mind. A woman who is feels like this is the year that I am blooming. This is the year that I look at myself in the mirror and I say, I love you. This is the year that I feel sexy and I believe in myself and I'm confident. And I am going to let that sexy out of the closet. <laughs> and I... I think my ideal person is as the people that I've been working with are moms. Like I love moms. Me being so joyful and seeing Everett so joyful, like that is a gift. And I want that for the mamas. I want them to dance with their kids for their kids. <laughs> like I want that for them. And so a person who, whether you love dancing or not, I do believe it does bring you joy. Like the other day I found in the Bible that it said, I'm going to paraphrase this because I do not know it word for word yet, but it was Jeremiah 31, 13. And it said something to the effect that we are going to dance young and old and let go of the sorrow. So if you're ready to dance and let go of that sorrow, like I'm your girl, let's go, let's dance and let's have a healing party. <laughs> and it is a party because I think a lot of people say healing is, is hard. And it's not easy. And that's very, very true. It's very true. It's hard. It's not easy. But if I can be the one to help bring some joy there, if I can be someone to help bring some of that fun into the healing process, I want to do that. I desire to do that. And I also am a firm believer that crying is just like a release. Like I have never cried so much and I've never been so happy. <laughs> and so I'm like crying in meditation every day every day there's tears there's tears of joy there's tears of release there's tears of like oh my god finally and <laughs> and i'm just moving that energy around that stagnant that stuckness that uh that feeling and so that is yeah that is what i want for the people that i'm going to serve in this new venture that i'm taking mm, 18 year old josie was 2006 so that was the year i was supposed to be graduating but because i'd graduated in 2005 a year earlier i was already living on my own i had moved into my own apartment and I was working as a telemarketer and I thought I was making such good money as a telemarketer <laughs> at 18 years old. Yeah, 18 year old Josie. That is so crazy to think about. Oh, 18 year old Josie was allowing herself to be walked on and mistreated. 18 year old Josie was in a relationship that was not serving her at all. A relationship where she wasn't valued, she was cheated on, she was lied to, manipulated, and I kept coming back. Like I would leave and come back, leave and come back. 18 year old Josie was, yeah, she didn't know how awesome she was. Yeah. So the per people that I had attracted in my life at 18 years old were, again, I was people pleasing back then. I was trying to fit in. So I was just a ship shifter back then with the people that I hung out with and surrounded myself with. But I know I did have a lot of fun back then at 18 years old, but I definitely was not being good to myself. So at 18 years old, I was begging to be seen and heard and understood and belong. I had just moved from Nampa to Boise. And so I had to almost like make, it's almost like a start over. I had to like make new friends. And it wasn't like a very far move, but it was a far enough move that 
I had to make new friends. Like me and my best friend at that time had a huge falling out. And when I recall that falling out now, it makes no sense. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. But again, everything has its purpose. Everything has its season. And so now I can look back and really like what, like there was no reason for that fight that we had back then. So I was starting all over and I was reading those self-help books and trying to figure out, trying to figure myself out. Words don't teach. And so I did, I just, I guess, kept going in that cycle of like people pleasing and trying to find my people and not knowing who my people are. And I'm sure a lot of 18 year olds <laughs> can definitely relate to feeling lost and not knowing who they are, especially because at that time you're transitioning from being completely taken care of by somebody else. And now you're in charge of taking care of yourself. And so that was the complete like journey of finding out what that was going to look like for myself. Starting over is a very recurring, recurring theme in my life. I'm always reinventing myself. I say like new hairstyle, new Josie. <laughs> I recently posted on my Instagram a highlight of my hairstyles because a lot of people are like very intrigued by my hair, which I didn't realize, <laughs> but it does change with the, as I evolve and change. And as we know, black women hair is a whole thing. And so I love that way of expressing myself through my hair. And so, yeah, beginnings are part of that. So I say, change your hair, change your life. That's always been my motto as a cosmetologist in my chair. When my clients would come in and want that total transformation, I was just giddy and fired up because it is like, if you change what you see, you change what you, if you change what you say, you change what you see. So if you're seeing something different, then you can start to change that narrative for yourself a little bit. And so it starts, it does start with feeling good about what you see in the mirror, because if you are feeling good about what you see in the mirror, then you can start saying something different. You can start maybe seeing the possibilities. And so, yeah, new beginnings has been a very recurring theme in my life. And I love new beginnings. I love the freshness of it. I love that fire that get lit up inside when you're starting something new. And I'm an avid learner. So I'm always learning and growing always. I mean, it's like that butterfly that comes to my mind. It's always just like, just expanding and expanding, and expanding. And as I get older, I'm learning there's an infinite amount of room to expand. Like there's this box and I'm shattering that box because it doesn't exist. That box doesn't exist for any of us. We decide, we decide if that box is going to exist. And so when I was 18 and when I was young, I was in this box of what people thought I should be doing, what I should be saying, how I should be dressing. Like I was pleasing everybody else. And I was saying so many yeses when I should have been saying so many no's. Like no should have been like the word, that should have been my word <laughs> for 18. But I didn't know back then. That is, I think, why I've gotten to this line of work where I want women to learn to say no so that the yeses can open up because there's so many yeses. I read this amazing quote the other day that said, like, there's a billion realities. There's a billion realities we have to create from and nobody can create it for us. Like we're the only ones that can create those billion realities. And each new thought creates a new reality. Each new, each way of like, each time we write a different story for ourselves, it creates a new reality. And that has been so true for me. Like I just always writing new stories. I'm just always learning like new ways of being and how I want to feel. Like I just, I'm always wanting to like go towards how do I want to feel? What's the mood that I want to have in this chapter? And that I think has been like the guiding force. And I didn't know that when I was 18, I wasn't living from that place of what's the mood, what's the feel. It was like, how could I fit in? How could I belong? How can I, yeah, I was all up in my head and I was still that victim. So that was when I was just vacant it till I make it. I was, I was definitely burying everything deep and just looking for validation everywhere else. Like I was looking for people to tell me you're doing a good job. I was looking for people to tell me you're beautiful. Healthy support system versus an unhealthy support system. And how do I know the difference? It's the same way now that I lead in my business and I lead in my life is if it feels good, like if it feels good, if it feels in alignment, if somebody is speaking to me and it's like going straight to my soul, like if my 
spine lights up it is tingling sensations like if i'm in that flow if I'm, i just feel it it's a feeling that you feel when people are for you versus against you and so i think that's why even with my family even with my dad like we've been through so much but i knew he was always for me like even <laughs> even in the suffering that we both went through together he was always for me he was my dad he named me Jocelyn because he's Jocelyn so I was named after my father so I know that the people are for you because you just feel it it feels different so even when they're they're not being their truest best self you still know it even underneath all that so for the longest time, I was always getting new friends, new friends, new groups of friends, new groups of friends. And I was always beating myself up because I always thought I'm wrong. I'm doing something wrong. And that's the reason why these people are just kind of fleeing out of my life. But what I've come to find is that each time I peeled back another layer of onion, I became a different version of myself. I was being a different called to be a different Josie, a different Jocelyn, as that is my full name in that moment. And so it is hard to be in that support system when you're, you've changed as a person, you're no longer that person. And so I shed so many groups of friends. And for the longest time, I thought there was something wrong with me. Like I did something wrong, but no, I was doing everything right because I was starting to listen to what I needed. I was starting to ask myself those questions. Like, like, are these people for me? Does it feel good? And now that's how I live my life. Is it, does it feel good? Does it feel in alignment? Is it easy? And friends matter to me. I believe that my friends are the biggest gifts, but I've also learned that I don't need 50 friends. Like for the longest time, it's like the bigger my circle was, the better I felt about myself. But now it's like, I have my core friends. Like I can fit in a hand and they're my people and they feel good. Like I could call them up at like four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. And I know they're going to pick up their phone. I know that they care about me without a shadow of a doubt. And they're always coming from a good place, even when it's constructive. And I know earlier I talked about constructive criticism, but it just hits different from certain people. They just know how to say it to you in a way that you're, you're going to hear it different. New starts and new beginnings are like, I guess in my DNA, it's just, like when I look back at the, my life, we were always, my parents were always starting us over. Like we were always like, like in that new home, we were always moving. So I guess, yeah, as new beginnings, it was always forced upon me and I didn't have control in my childhood for those beginnings. But now as an adult and I am beginning, I am able to, I don't even know control it, but I get to decide. I don't get to control it but I get to decide. I get to decide when those new beginnings start. And I guess that feeling of the new beginning, like I love that fire that burns inside. And I think that's a creative thing. <laughs> I think just being a creative and an entrepreneur is just the freshness of new beginnings is I'm very good at that new beginnings, but I do need that accountability to reach that in line. I need somebody kind of holding my hand and I didn't always ask for that help. So I think that probably is why that new beginning, I was always doing that because I knew how to do it. I knew what it felt like in my body to do new beginnings. So now that I'm older and I'm reaching out and asking for help, I'm able to cross those finish lines that I probably wouldn't have been able to without the help of asking for it. Yeah. I came to the realization the other day. So I took about five months off of life to go travel to Southeast Asia right before I got married in 2017 and new adventure, new beginning, like this is exciting. But what I've come to realize is there was a part of me that was running away. There was a part of me that was running away from doing that deep work on myself. Like it just always feels good to be going, like doing something different, like don't sit in it for too long. And so I think that's a trauma response because if you sit for so long, then all these thoughts come up and all these things happen. So people call it bravery, but I call it survival <laughs> is what I was doing by doing those new beginnings and always looking for the next best thing and always looking for what can make me feel good. Like it was always an eternal, it was always an external thing for me. 
that was what my trip was. It was like, I was literally running away from my life because it didn't feel good. And so I was like, what can I do? That's going to shock myself. That's going to make me feel good. And why not do this five month abroad? Why not just like leave my life because it doesn't feel good in this moment. So I'm just going to go create another one. And what I learned through that five month of traveling was that no matter where I went, no matter how beautiful it was, I was there with myself. (laughs) So those thoughts still came up. The situation still happened. It was just in a new place. That's when I started doing the meditating. That was when I started doing yoga and getting, starting to start that slowly process and stop reading the books about healing and really now put it into practice. And yeah, first it didn't feel good. Of course, it's like a wound. (laughs) It's like you're opening up a wound. And so of course it's not going to feel good, but through that experience, I had to learn that the reason why I kept craving new beginnings and the reason why I was so afraid to move back home, even I was like, if I move back home, what does that mean? If I move back to Idaho, what does that mean? Does it mean that I've failed? Does that mean that I didn't make it where I was? Does it mean that I have to like become that Josie that was there in 2011? So yeah, I was like, what does that mean? Like, is by going back in time? So I had to come back to myself and be like, no, I am Josie now. And wherever I go, it's like a remembering. It's like wherever I go, my essence never changes. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed.